Hello everyone, my name is Aiden Burnell. I hope you all had a fantastic 2023. And in this video, I want to talk about my favorite pens of this year. Now this year has definitely been a, a year of transitions, a year of changes. And I suppose that's sort of represented in my collection how I use my pens this year. Um, I didn't really post much because I actually graduated college and started a full-time job. That's my excuse this year for why I haven't been creating as much content as I would like, but I still really appreciate everyone's support uh, along the way. And so for this video, I'm gonna be talking about these, and these are the five pens that I've really enjoyed the most this year in their own special ways. And so I wanted to showcase that and uh, hopefully you sort of see where I'm coming from. This isn't the sort of best five pens that came out in 2023. This isn't my opinion for my favorite pens of 2023 because uh, only a couple of these, well, three of them came out this year and two are just uh, two other favorites that I've had. So this is just my own personal list with my own personal taste. So uh, I hope you understand that as we jump into this list. So the first pen, this pen is a Leonardo Gran Reserva Blue Royale. Uh, and that's a lot of big words. Um, so essentially this pen is just a larger Memento Zero Grande. I don't know if it's the largest pen they make, but it's definitely up there. And it has a number eight gold nib, which is not something I had before getting this pen. Um, it's just fantastic. It's also got a red ebonite feed. Uh, and then the body itself is made of Omos Blue Royale celluloid, which uh, it's just absolutely to die for. A uh, funny story with this pen, when I originally ordered it towards the start of the year, it arrived and the box was rattling as I went to unbox it. And that's because the feed had actually sort of snapped at the uh, edge of the nib collar here. Uh, but thankfully I was able to return it and get it replaced pretty quickly. Um, so once uh, Salvo from Leonardo had helped uh, figure things out there, I really was able to enjoy this pen. And what a fantastic pen it is. I mean, just it's a, it's a large pen but it's not very heavy, and so it's just extremely comfortable for long writing sessions. I really enjoyed writing letters with it and things like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely one of my favorites of the year. This next one is actually something that I got at the 2023 San Francisco Fountain Pen Show, which I had a lot of fun at this year. This one is the Cusado Kakari Fountain Pen in raw titanium. Uh, this one is number 14 of 50 of the initial run. Uh, and it's just a fantastic pen. Honestly, almost perfect in every way as a sort of everyday use pen from my standpoint. Uh, it's got the sort of same filling system that a Conid has with a few adjustments that I think sort of improve how it works. Uh, it's, it's really fascinating to use. I've done a, a few shorts, a few videos about it, um, but it's just an absolutely fantastic pen. I, I really... Uh, <laughs> I can't say enough good things about it. It's perfectly weighted. It's got titanium uh, on the end cap and on the grip section. It's not too big to deal with that weight. And then the 14 karat nib it has is frankly just one of my favorite nibs I've ever used. Um, they don't really talk about where they source their nibs from, maybe because they're you know trying to keep it on the down low um, just so they can uh, keep having nibs such as good as this without uh, anyone else sort of you know, anyways, I think you get what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just been an absolutely fantastic pen. Probably my most used pen throughout this year, even though I've only refilled it like <laughs> two or three times, just because it holds an absolutely massive amount of ink, thanks to that uh, the similar like bulk filler system they've got going on here. Um, so as long as you don't care that there's no clip and it might roll off your desk, this is frankly one of my favorite pens out there today. Next up, this one is a real classic. This has been the pen that's been accompanying me at work uh, through most of this year. This is the Platinum 3776 Century in Borgonia. Um, I don't know if I can say anything that hasn't already been said about this pen, but it's just fantastic at what it does. No frills, it's just a well-made pen that writes beautifully and gets the job done. It's a cartridge converter, and I think you do still need to pay extra, extra for the converter. And for a pen at this price point, that's kind of ridiculous, but <laughs> it's definitely worth it because this pen is just, it's one of the cheaper uh, fountain pens at the sort of entry level gold nib price point, but uh, it really just knocks it out of the park. It's very professional looking, so you know, it won't you know drive people too crazy, won't attract too much attention. 
uh, if you're using it someplace formal, but uh, it's also just so much fun. Uh, and the little like slip and seal cap mechanism is uh, great to just, you know, fidget around with if you're bored um, at work or something. Uh, <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, it's just a fantastic pen that has served my purposes just amazingly this year. Uh, and so that's the reason it's on my list. This next pen is a late edition. I've only actually had this for a few months. I was sent this Conway Stewart Series 58 Frisian by Conway Stewart to give it a look, maybe a review. Um, and I've just really fallen in love with it. Um, I think odds are I'm gonna actually just pick this one up. Um, and there's a very specific reason why that is. Uh, if you've been watching my stuff for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of vintage fountain pens. And while they can be a bit finicky to use in, in the modern day and stuff like that, and maybe I wouldn't always bring a vintage fountain pen to work, I can bring a modern fountain pen that's styled after vintage fountain pens. This Series 58 is much smaller than most modern pens, while still being just like an absolute workhorse that gets the job done. It's got a number five nib, which again, you don't see on too many like quote unquote full size pens nowadays, um, but it's really just fantastic. It's similar to the 3776 in that it doesn't got too many frills. It's not a piston filler like the uh, Grand Reserva. It's not a, a bulk filler type system like the Kakari. It's just a cartridge converter, so it's it's simple, but it works perfectly. It's got a, I believe a Yovo number five nib. Again, simple, but works perfectly. Uh, and then, yeah, it's made of a, a sort of cracked ice material, which definitely is a bit more um, eye popping than maybe the 3776, which is understated, but still beautiful. This definitely is a little more in your face, but uh, still a fantastic pen. And this sort of represents something that I wish I saw more in the stationary world today, which is being inspired by be, ha, having design that's inspired by vintage pens. You see it maybe in like the Estabrook SE, sort of, um, but really for a hobby that has such a rich history uh, of products and like designs to draw from, you really don't see it much. And I, I hope you see it. I, I hope we will see it more in the future. And so that's really one of the reasons why I put this on this list. Finally, we have another new pen on this list. This is the second pen that I got at the 2023 San Francisco Fountain Pen Show. If I recall, I only got three pens at that show, which uh, I showed marvelous restraint there, if I'm honest. But uh, this one is the Shone Design Aluminum Full Size Pen, specifically with the Broad Monarch Nib. And the Monarch is a nib that Ian Shone has been working on for a while but uh, he was just able to release it into full production this year. It's a titanium nib that's similar to the sort of Schaefer Triumph conical style nibs of old. Uh, again, that sort of vintage inspiration I was telling you about, uh, which means it's, it's not very flexible, but it is just an absolutely beautiful writer. It's got an old pen feed too, which you really don't see much. Um, and then it's just your standard cartridge converter as well. Of course, the full size itself that Shown Design makes is a fantastic pen in its own right. I've had a couple of them for a, a few years and really enjoyed them, but a nib like the Monarch just takes it to a whole new level. It's a, a wholly unique writing experience that I don't think I've ever really had in another pen. And that's one of the great things I love about this hobby is just completely unique experiences uh, and discovering new things uh, that just make writing all that more fun. So obviously I love the color matching the sort of uh, rainbow sort of colorway on the titanium with the uh, color of the pen here. Uh, this has not been a pen that I've used every day this year. It's more like a special occasion type thing because the broad nib, as you'll see in the writing sample, is just like, <laughs> it's insane. Um, but I've probably had more fun with this pen than any other this year. So essentially, that's the list. That's my top five pens of this year. Um, Hopefully, I provided some good explanations for why I chose what I did. Uh, I can't wait to see what next year brings. Uh, and yeah, let me know down in the comments uh, what your favorite pens have been this year. Because I know there are just so many different pens out there that everyone can enjoy them in their own way. And I think that's one of the great things about this hobby as we wrap up the year. It's nice to look back on positives like that. So yeah, this is my list. Let's get into some writing samples.
check it out and yeah okay let's get into the writing samples here first of all we have the The Leonardo Grand Reserva Blue Royale Celluloid, and this is with a 14K number eight medium nib. And the ink, I believe, is and Derillium Indigo Bunting Blue. This is actually another ink that I picked up at the show, uh, and I really like this one. It's just, uh, I don't know, just a lovely little indigo blue-black ink. And then, like I said, I mean, with the Ebonite feed, this one is pretty wet. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You can see sort of the ink on the feed there, hopefully. But yeah. This is just a lovely pen. Really no complaints here. And then of course, three out of seven. Who doesn't love a little limited edition, huh? Next, we have the... Oh, I always forget you gotta unscrew the back. <laughs> the Cusado Kakari Fountain Pen. This is in titanium. It has a 14K medium fine nib and it is inked with Robert Oster Pacific Ocean Teal. If I remember correctly, that's a 2017 San Francisco Pen Show ink, so that's a bit of a throwback there. <laughs> that is one of my favorite inks. I'm very glad I picked up two bottles because I'm almost through the first one. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is, it's not like a super gushing, uh, <clears throat> super gushing feed or anything, but it's not trying to be, you know. There's just a great all around writer. Um, yeah, really no complaints. And it's got a little bit of flexibility, but you never want to push it. Oh, I realize I should probably show you that uh, number eight gold nib on the Leonardo and how flexible that is. Uh, it's also not too flexy. Um, and again, I don't really want to push it. But it gives you a little something, you know. No complaints there. Next, we have the classic... Platinum Century 3776 Borgonia. There is really nothing I can say that hasn't already been said about this pen. Um, but yeah, this is just a fantastic everyday pen. No frills, just gets the job done and is a fantastic writing experience while doing it. This, I believe, is Noodler's Black. Uh, professional ink for a pen that is mostly used in a professional setting. Uh, it's a pretty dry pen, but uh, it's never had any flow issues. And frankly, for some of the terrible paper I have to use at work, that's probably a pretty good thing. As for the flexibility of the nib, yeah, this one's pretty much a nail. You're not going to get much out of this, but that's not what it's for. This is just to get a job done while having a great writing experience. And you can't complain about that. Next, we have the
Conway Stewart, Series 58, Frisian. And yeah, you can see this is a much smaller pen than the other ones. Um, and that's due to the sort of vintage styling and inspiration. And sometimes that's just really something that's comfortable to go for. So I really found it to be a fantastic pen. This is just one of those pens similar to the 3776. Like I said, it just, it gets the job done. It's fantastically like constructed and produced, well-made. Everything is considered and it just works. It's fantastic. This one is an 18 karat uh, number five extra fine. And I've really found myself drifting away from extra fine nibs over the past few years, but uh, this one I, I do actually enjoy. Um, yeah, I don't really know. It's sort of my, my tastes in nibs sort of ebbs and flows. And I'm not really sure why, but that's just, hey, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. I really put myself in a pickle here because I don't remember what ink I put in this. Aha, uh -huh. I believe it is Urban Cacao do Brazil, I think. Don't quote me on that though, okay? <laughs> And then the uh, sort of flow itself, again, it's not too wet of a pen, but this is an extra fine, so um, can't complain. And then actually this nib I found to be relatively flexible, but I think also just the extra fine sizing sort of makes that flexibility stand out compared to some of the other pens on this list. But uh, still, it's been nice and bouncy to use. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful writing experience, again. It's, it may not be the flashiest pen, but also it's not too quiet with that material, you know. Um, and yeah, it's just an extremely well-made pen that I've really enjoyed. Finally, on this list, we have probably one of my favorite writing experiences of this year. It is the Shown Design Monoc. Aluminum full size. And this is a broad Monoc nib. So it is just absolutely insane in how much ink it can lay down. Uh, this, this nib is just so much fun. Uh, let's see, I believe the ink is the same as what was in the Leonardo. I believe this is the Andorillium Indigo Bunting Blue. And yeah, I mean, this nib is a nail, just like those old Schaefer uh, Triumph nibs, but that is perfectly okay with a writing experience like this. Man, I, I mean, I, I can see why maybe not everyone would go for this just because it is really expensive for what it's worth. Um, but, you know, the results speak for themselves. This is just such a fun pen to write with. It's... It's really unlike anything I've ever used. And it's not just because, not because it's extremely different, but just in, the, in those little intricacies, like the fact that the nib has sort of that Waverly upturn, the, the tipping material, it just, it feels different. And just those like little subtle ways that just make it endlessly fascinating and constantly entertaining to write with. And because of that, it's really just been one of my favorite pens of the year. And, uh, you can't blame me there, can you? And then, I mean, come on, look at that pen. The coloring on that is great. Um, but yeah, that is the writing samples for all these pens. So, uh, this is the final list. These are, I guess, my five favorite pens this year. Certainly they were the ones that saw the bulk of the use. Um, and yeah, I've been loving these. Let me know actually uh, what pens you've been loving to this year because, you know, everyone's taste sort of changes over time and this is, list certainly wouldn't look like this if I was talking about things last year. I've made a list like this before and the pens were certainly different then. And I'm sure a list like this will be different next year too. But that's the great thing about taste, you know, it always changes. And uh, yeah, 
I hope you sort of see where I'm coming from on these. I think these are all absolutely fantastic pens. I am overjoyed to have them in, in my collection. And uh, I can't wait to do a video like this next year. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed me showcasing these pens, my favorites. And uh, I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.